Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 3rd of August 2020 and the time has just gone 8.59 British summer time. And, the and um, it's been a fairly mixed start to the European session. Um, we've seen losses here in London, um, France and, and Italy. Uh, while we are seeing a, move, uh, a positive move to, um, over in Germany. Um, there's been a few stories going around uh, the last the last few days. Obviously, the coronavirus crisis is still uh, is still a major issue. Um, the number of case numbers is on the rise. Various different countries are um, are uh, kind of reimposing or pausing reimposing restrictions or uh, pausing the reopening of their economies. Um, the last we've heard uh, over in the US, the one trillion dollar stimulus package has not been. Uh, agreed upon yet. The Republicans and Democrats are still going back and forth on that. Um, HSBC, um, the, the the biggest bank in Europe, they posted their numbers out this morning, um, second quarter, first half numbers. Um, the second quarter loan impairment, um, the provision for bad debts was, was larger than expected, so a very kind of common theme of both the um, European and US banks this reporting season. Um, also, US-China trade relations continue to be on the radar. We heard over the last few days, Mike Pompeo, the US Secretary of State, uh, talks about how the Trump administration is going to potentially looking to target, you know, quote, an array uh, of Chinese state-controlled software companies. Uh, and in the last 12 hours, we've had various different manufacturing uh, reports. Um, we've had the Kaishin survey of Chinese manufacturing. That sh came in better than expected and showed a decent increase on the month. Uh, and we've had various different uh, Eurozone economies, um, Spain, Italy, France, Germany, post their manufacturing numbers. And all of those uh, showed you know nice increases on the month. So it's clear that the that the global, you know, the manufacturing sectors of major economies, it continues to, uh, to, to rebound. As always with, with the uh, weekly market update, I'll run through the week ahead, then I'll run through some popular markets, indices, currencies, and commodities in that order. order. So starting off, starting off yeah, we have uh, a article, we can get our bill on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under, under insights, and look at your news and analysis, you can find it right here. As I mentioned, the manufacturing, global manufacturing PMI reports um, to, are up to date, as with the HSBC figures. Looking ahead to tomorrow, we have first half results from BP. We also have Q3 numbers from Disney. We also have um, the Reserve Bank of Australia have their interest rate meeting on Wednesday. We will have the service PMI reports from major economies of the world. We'll also have the first half numbers from Metro Bank on Thursday. We're going to have the Bank of England interest rate decision on Thursday. We also have first half numbers from ITB. Friday, we have uh, first half numbers from Cine World, uh, and then oh, and, and the big one to watch out for on Friday is of course going to be the U.S. non-farm payrolls report. Um, it's often deemed to be the kind of the most important update of the month of the month. Uh, so please keep an eye on that. Uh, turning our attention now to the indices, starting off with the FTSE 100. Um, we can see here that the last few last few couple of months, basically, because this this the high here of you know, we can see the high here in uh, early to mid June. We have a move lower, a rebound here. The market really couldn't get get a, you know, get get that much beyond the six thousand three hundred. You know, up to six thousand three hundred forty odd. Started to move lower again. You know, in the last couple of sessions, we've fallen back to levels last seen in late May. We're drifting lower here. You know, we're currently at you know, 5,905, so we're below the psychologically important 6,000 mark. While we remain the, below the psychologically important 6,000 mark, it's likely we could see further losses from here. And if we do press on lower from here, we could be looking heading back down toward this zone here, down around 5,800. And if you have a size of break below that, we could head, head down toward this zone here, down around 5,660. Uh, a move to the upside could occur resistance uh, from the psychologically important 6,000 metric. And if you go beyond that, we could be heading up toward this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, uh, which comes into play just south of 6,200. Um, notice how on a few occasions, not too long ago, in, you know, in, in June, we saw that this blue line, the 50-day moving average, act nicely as support. We saw some consolidation in, 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 from that area, from the metric, around that metric, 
in the middle of July. Um, so the metric has, has been important in the past. It makes it more likely it will be of importance in the future, although there are no guarantees. Taking a look now at what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. So the wider view has been that the German market has been quite strong. We set a multi-month high um, in, in, in late July, but since then, it was the highest level seen since uh, since um, well, basically when the uh, when the when the coronavirus crisis kicked off, it was the highest level seen since late late February. But notice how you've been kind of moving steadily lower in the last few sessions. This red line here, the Trinity moving average, acted nicely as support uh, only on Friday. That comes into play um, at twelve thousand two hundred six. While we hold above that, uh, it's likely that we could see the, the wider upward trend continue. And if we do press on higher from here, we could be heading towards 12,600. You know, there's a lot of consolidation in that area. And if you go beyond 12,600, we could head up towards this zone here around 12,900. We can see that, you know, that area acted as resistance on a few occasions there, thereabouts. Um, so keep an eye out for that. If on the other hand, though, we do have a break below um, the Trinity moving average, we could be then heading down, down towards 12,000. You know, it's a big psychological number and perhaps even a bit below it. You know, if you, take up, if you look at the lows of late June, uh, down around 11,956 there, thereabouts. So keep an eye out for 12,000 uh, and also 11,950, 60 there, thereabouts. I'll just now take a look at what's going on over in the US, starting off with the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones in um, in June hit its highest level since uh, since what well, basically since the end of financial since since, uh, since late February. But no doubt no, 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 the highs that I saw in July they 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 got the high in June June. June. So 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 if you look at the lows, the lows are higher. So we're still in this upward trend, but it's a bit concerning that we haven't re not really, we're not really gaining any ground to the upside. Um, and if you look at the last few the last few sessions. We've been drifting a bit lower. We're heading back down towards well, both the 20 moving average, the red line here, and the 50 moving average, the blue line here. While we hold above those metrics, and they both come into play in around the same area, um, in around uh, the 20 moving average comes into play at 26,241. The 50 moving average comes into play at 26,160. There, thereabouts. While we hold hold above above both those metrics. It's likely we could see the wider upward trend continue. We could be looking at retesting 27,000. 27, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting, we could be retesting the early June highs in around 27,633. But if we do have a decent break below those metrics, we could take us back down towards the, the, the mid, you know, the early July low in 25,418, this area here. And if we have a break below that, it could take us back down towards the kind of psychologically important 25,000 number. Take a look at the S&P 500. Now, the S&P 500 is performing, has outperformed the previous markets. We can see here that not only has it been in a solid upward trend basically since late March, the, 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 uh, the gains that it's been making have actually been higher and higher. So the, the levels that we've seen in the last few days have been kind of effectively kind of multi-month highs. The highest that we saw at 28, the highest, well, actually, actually that, that quite isn't, isn't, isn't quite true. I apologize for that. The highest that we saw last week uh, was in around the region of 3,290, sorry, sorry, on the, on the 23rd of July, 3,292. The highest that we saw last last week, we're not too far away from that, 3,280. So we're not too far away from, from the kind of multi-month highs that were set um, on the 23rd of July. So we're still in the, in the upward trend. If we press on higher from here, we could be looking at, at, at targeting 3,300. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking heading up towards 3,350. Now keep in mind, we haven't really seen these levels um, since kind of mid-February, essentially when the kind of coronavirus crisis really kind of ramped up as far as Western stock markets are concerned. Uh, if we do move to the downside, we could see fresh buyers out of the fold because let's face it, Buying on the dip has, has been a popular strategy in the last few months. So if we do move lower, lower from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 3,200. We can see on a few occasions the metric acted nicely as support. 
and even if you go even if you go but below that we could see support come into play from this blue line here the 50 day moving average it acted nicely as support on a few occasions uh, in in, uh, in in june and that metric comes into play at 3148 take a look now at the um, couple of currency pairs starting off euro dollar so one of the kind of common themes recently has been the kind of the weakness in the u.s dollar uh the u.s dollar index not too long ago had its highest level or sorry, its lowest level rather uh, in over two years so it's a very it's in pretty poor shape and uh, conversely the euro has gained ground the euro you know conversely the other side of the coin um euro dollar hit its highest level in over two years uh, we also saw decent gains uh, being made in the British pound as well. But we can see here that the level that we, that we saw initially at the highs of Friday on the euro dollar were the highest in over two years. But we notice how we have uh, you know the long wick on the on, on Friday's candle, kind of denoting decision. You know we, we've moved lower again. After we've had a basically a fantastic run the last few weeks, so we could be in for a correction it could be in for a bit of a pullback on euro dollar and you know should that be the case because we're currently trading in around one spot seventeen seventy we could like be heading back down towards you know you know one one spot seventeen or maybe even the kind of one spot sixteen zone to be honest it's in such a, a strong upper trend even if we go go all the way back to kind of one fourteen where we can see that this zone acted broadly speaking as resistance in in um early to mid june and we saw a lot of consolidation in around, in around early july to one fourteen even if you go back to all the way to fourteen we still see the wider or higher trend so it's a very 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 strong strong recently recently if you do press on higher from here and came out to take out friday's high which comes into play in around one spot nineteen oh eight if you go beyond that you know the next big number that i got for will of course be one spot 20. so we'll take a look now on what's going on on the pound versus the us dollar like i said weakness in the dollar has been a common theme recently but similar situation we saw on friday it hit its highest level in uh in four and a half months uh it, you know over four months going on five months but we can see here like you know the, the shape of this candle here, the long wick on it, denotes a bit of indecision. Once again, this is you know, it would also suggest indecision, the, the shape of this of today's candle. So we could be in for a period of maybe drifting a bit lower, giving back some of the ground. If that is the case, we could potentially look ahead back down towards 130. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's a big number as far as your your euro dollar is sorry, pound dollar is concerned. Uh, and if you do press on lower from there, we could even go all the way back towards, you know, 128 or even all the way back potentially to the 200 day moving average, you know, one spot, 2702. And, if you, you know, even if you were to go back all the way, all this, this far back, we would still remain kind of in the upward trend. Um, if we continue to hold above the kind of 130 level, that would kind of bode well for, for pounds, for, for um, the pound dollar. And then we could be looking at retesting the 130 area or even go beyond that up towards up towards one spot 3082 you can see here that 130 acted nicely on a few occasions um as resistance one one spot 32 that area acted resistance on a few occasions to pound for pound dollar and even if you go beyond one, 132 we could be looking at targeting the highs of december last year in at one spot 3284 lastly i'll take a look at some commodities starting off with gold gold has been on a phenomenon recently um only even today yet again another new all-time high was just about eked out um on the gold market uh we're currently we have, we have retreated retreated we have retreated a small bit um we're currently at 1972 you know so psychologically the next traders are all focused on the two thousand dollar mark and of course if you go beyond two thousand bucks you know it's, it's likely that the the positive tr trend is going to continue uh if we do see a bit of a move to the downside in gold support we found from this zone here in at 1940 and if we go below that we could be heading back down towards 1900 and if you go below that we could be heading back down towards 1863 but like i said we're in a phenomenal um upward a very strong upward trend you know we could go back all the way um back to you know 1800 and still be and still not have broken the upper trend. Um, so gold continues to be in quite good shape. Keep an eye on what's going on with the US dollar. Um, in the last few weeks and months, there's been a very strong inverse relationship between the two. And the recent weakness in gold has been a big 
has been very beneficial. So weakness in the US dollar has been very beneficial to gold. Um, so keep, if you are going to trade in gold, keep an eye on the greenback. Lastly, I'll take a look at oil. Uh, I'll start. I'll take a look at Brent crude oil, the October contract. So first things first, since late April, we can see it's been a nice upward trend. Uh, in mid to late July, it had a four month high. So the, you know, the, trend, is, the, the, the trend is clearly to, to the upside. The last few sessions have been a, bit, been, a, been a bit boring, but it maintains, it can still continue to be in the uptrend. And we're currently at $43 spot, you know, 15 cents. If you continue to press on higher from here, and if you, if you take off the recent highs, we could be looking at targeting at this area here, the, um, the early May, early March lows. And that comes into play at $46 and it's 67 cents. Um, if, if you know, if you, that, that's, that, keep an eye on, keep an eye on that to the upside. Uh, and if you go beyond that, we could then be looking heading up towards the, you know, 50 bucks per barrel area. Um, if we do see the, a bit of a drift lower, we could see support come, come into play from this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, and that comes into play at 41 spot 84. We can see how, how that acted as nicely as support um, only on Thursday, just gone. And you know, the metric has been important in the past. It makes it more likely it will be of importance in the future. Uh, and if you go below that, we could we could see support come into play from the 40 bucks uh, bar region. You know, it's, it's, it's a big number. And then also we could see how nicely it acted as support previously. Um, thank you for listening. That's all from this from this week. Stay safe, have a good training week, and good luck.